being natural law, there's, there's only one law, and that's you either know or you don't know. There's no guesswork. It's like you know when you're hungry. You know when you want to sleep. You know when you want to uh, go to the restroom. They're, these are knowing. These are all natural knowingness. It has a, a great deal of difference from the synthetic or, or <laughs> invented um, system of, of guesswork, of, of belief, if you will. You can believe this, but somebody can come along and get you to disbelieve it, and vice versa. So you go around and around and around <coughs> all, all your life sometimes, for some people, and never seem to get anywhere until you stand up and look into natural law, which is either you know or you don't know. And if you don't know, then you proceed along a line that's comfortable for you. You proceed into the subject matter that you're studying, and you don't give up until you know what it is. You don't, there's no more guesswork. And you don't have to try to do this, because if you're following natural law, it will come to you. All you have to do is start it. The first step is just, I want to learn this. I want to know this. And just start it, and pretty soon, it will start teaching you. This might look like a radio-controlled bee, but it's actually a bee with a little radar transponder on it, which means that we can track this bee as it flies around the field. And these little guys can carry 90% of their body weight in pollen, so it won't affect the way it flies. I was in physics class, and the teacher was saying, uh, you know, uh, bumblebees can't fly. There's, it's impossible. They can't, aerodynamically, they can't fly. And I was on the second floor of the classroom, and I looked out the window, and there was a big, beautiful bumblebee staring at me right in the eye. And he was standing there doing something that this guy said he couldn't do. First of all, the bees are flying much faster than predicted, an incredible 30 miles an hour, even when fully laden. The next surprise is where the bees go. They almost always overfly potentially decent food. And now I was raised in the woods. I was raised in Northern California in a place called Paradise. One of the things that taught me natural law, the first thing that I can remember, was an anthill that we encountered. It was about three feet, maybe higher, three, three and a half feet tall. And there was thousands and thousands of ants crawling around it. And I was curious, I've always been curious, so I wanted to see what they were doing, and I started poking them with a stick to see what they'd do. Well, I didn't know they could spit acid. They're called uh, spit ants or something. I don't know what they were, but they, they got all over me and just stung the heck out of me. And I've never forgotten that, that lesson. And so from then on, I understood that you get back what you put out. If you go pester something, you're going to get pestered back one way or another. Sooner or later, what goes around comes around the old thing. And that's natural law. That's the first law of nature. And once they've found their patch, they then repeatedly shuttle to and from it. And this is the really clever bit. In spite of 30 mile an hour crosswinds, whether out or back, they all fly in dead straight lines. So anyway, getting back to the bumblebee, I, uh, I, I quit. I got out of school. I just, I just walked out and said, no, I'm going back to the woods, which I did. I went back to, to nature and because I was learning a lot, just uh, observing things and, and uh, not pestering, but just uh, observing and being very careful of how do I, I observed what was happening. And um, I ran into uh, a person. His name was Arthur Aho. What um, Aho explained to me was that, and, and he told me about the Heisenberg <coughs> principle, that anything you look at, you are vibrating energy. You are radiating out of these eyes. You're radiating energy. You're a live being. And everything you're looking at, you're changing right in front of your eyes. You don't realize it consciously, but that's what's happening. So you're never going to get to the absolute, because the energy it takes to measure something also changes it. So I said, okay, well, what's that got to do with the bumblebee and the, and the teacher? 
He said, well, he was right. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, he said Air, a bumblebee can't fly aerodynamically. Yeah. And he's right. And I said, well, what did bumblebees do? And they said, well, they levitate. And I said, well, how's that? And he says, come on, I'll show you. And he showed me. He wrote a book, incidentally. I don't know if it's still in print. It's in the Library of Congress. The book is called Tomorrow's Energy Need Not Be Fuel. And uh, in that book, he gave reference to what I'm talking about, that, <clears throat> uh, that of levitation, that um, the bumblebee, when he starts to beat his wings, when he starts to flap his wings, there's a little cavity, a hollow cavity, next to the larynx inside his, his system that's hollow. And when he beats his wings, he starts to resonate this energy, and it goes back and forth, just similar to, um, to a guitar strumming on one side of the room and hitting the same chord on the other side of the room, or uh, somebody hitting a high C and breaking a crystal. It's the same thing. It's resonance. And he said, what they do, they resonate. And when they resonate, they eventually reach the resonance of the field around them. And he explained it this way to me, that the Earth was, of course, spinning, but it was, it was operating on a frequency of 8.5 hertz per second or so forth. And he says, once this bumblebee hits that resonant frequency of its surroundings, it becomes a free agent. It creates a magnetic bubble around itself, and it can go anywhere it wants. And I said, well, that's not in any of the science books. He said, I know. <laughs> and you, know you probably never see it there either, but that's, that's what happens. They'll discover it someday and bring it out, but it, it's just uh, we have a conventional way of doing things, and then we have a natural way of doing things, and they're totally different. They're diametrically opposed in many, many cases.